welcome to the special edition of Coffee With. Our guest this morning is Dr. Winslow Sargent. He's the Chief Counsel for Advocacy for the Small Business Administration. Welcome, Dr. Sargent. We're so pleased to have you this morning. I'm glad to be here. As the Director of the Center for Women's Entrepreneurship, I'd like to get in a plug for women business owners yeah. and the research that you've done, because I've read some of that recently, and I know that women are starting businesses at twice the rate that men are, oh, but yeah. I know that they're not growing them. What we find is that it, it's important for our e economy to grow. We must make sure that small businesses grow. And that means that all aspects from service disabled veterans to women owned to minorities as well because that's the makeup of our country as well. And in the report that you've referenced, we have taken a look at, <clears throat> at what are some of the aspects or what are some of the challenges that women small business owners face. Now I know that there's been a huge focus within the administration to look at some of the barriers and look at some of the challenges as well. And so whether it's access to credit, whether it's um, whether it's the regulatory aspect, right. um, we're looking at ways to, to lower those barriers. So what we want to do is to make sure that all these businesses have access to capital so that they can have the chance to grow. And I think that's really critical because you can just grow so much if you're an independent and solo owner, but you have to hire to grow. I mean, at a certain point, I remember talking to a woman who said to me, it's easier to run my company with 35 employees than it is with three. Yeah. And yeah. I'd like your comments on, on why people need to hire and why they need to really do that to get to the next level. Well, we know that it takes money to make money, right? And so for a business to expand, to see the opportunity, you're going to have to have capital to enter into those markets because it takes a while for revenue to start to flow back to that business as well. And for our economy, which is built on small right. business, to grow, and we've seen positive trends these past couple of years, to start a small business is to do the unprecedented, is to be out in front. Right. And it's lonely being out in front. But we want to encourage those that are willing to take the chance to to have the wherewithal so that they can optimize their chances of being successful. So if you had to name three things that are the most important when you're starting a small business, what would you say that really you should have together before you get going? Well, I think that it's very, very important to know what you know, whether or not it's a product, whether or not it is a service, but know what are your strengths. I think that that's very, very important so that you can focus on what you do best and not be all things to all people. Look at the capital needs because once you know what you're going to do, then that leads into the next question, leads to the next point, how much capital do, do I need? Right. And how long will that capital last? Third, how big is the market? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, who are you marketing to? A and so those are the three things. And, and of course, it helps to make sure that your financial house is in order because it is a marathon, it's not a sprint. And so you're going to be there, you're going to work long hours, long days, but it's something that we've all done and something that our country is built upon. Right. And it's part of the American dream as well. So I would say that those are some of the things that one should focus on. Right. I've read about the three C's. Can you explain that to me? I've seen it in your research work and I don't really understand it. So, and I think the audience would really enjoy hearing about it as well. Well, the three C's and now the D deals with capital, counseling, contracting, and disaster. Those are the three C's and the D. And so those are some of the, um, those are the pillars that the SBA is built on to service the needs of small business. When you think of contracting, right, 23% of contracts are set aside for small business. So that's, a, so that's more than $100 billion of contract each year that the federal government have set aside for small business. When, when you look at counseling, it's very, very in, in, important that when you start a business, when you look at the scores or when you look at, at other the SBDCs, these are set aside to help those who want to start a business who may not know how to set up a company or how to go look for customers or just the structure of the business. That's very, very important. So, so we writing the business plan, looking at your marketing. Very, okay, very important. When, when you look at credit, of course, we all need access to capital. To start a business, you must have capital. You must look at the capital needs so that you can have your enterprise up and running. And also the D. Um, what many people don't realize is that with the SBA, when there's a, a disaster hits, the SBA will move in to, to assess the needs of those communities to help on the ground as well. So there's the three C's and now the D. The and so th those play an important role to, to make sure that we help small business and also help communities as well. What we found is that 
Government is best served when small businesses can help with products, help with running the operations as well. So I think that it's a plus-plus win-win for both small businesses and for our government. We know that those who are willing to take the chance to leave their operations or leave their comfort zone to start a business, that they've already made that decision. And so what we want to do is we want to find ways to encourage them. And so whether it's the contracting piece, whether it's the counseling, whether it's looking at the regulatory aspect in terms of getting a business off the ground, there are many ways that the government can serve. And that's the whole thing of the public-private partnership because government can play a, a constructive role as well. And so that's why we're pleased to be working on behalf of small business. So here's the question I think everybody's been wanting to ask you, which is, do you get to meet with the president? And if so, is it like a one-on-one? -on -one? <laughs> or come on, give us the insights here. Well, I report to the president. I haven't uh, met with him one-on-one -on -one yet. I do meet with his advisors, and we work closely with the White House. The Office of Advocacy plays a unique role within the executive branch. Um, we, we're charged not to represent the administration, but we are charged to represent small businesses to the administration. So it's our charge is, is to make sure that when it comes to when it comes to regulation, when it comes to when it comes to research, that we can be that conduit so that the administration, so that Congress knows what's in on the hearts and minds of small businesses. Can you tell me about one of your greatest accomplishments thus far? Well, one of the things is executive order 13563. This is an executive order that was signed by the president that calls for all agencies to make sure that within the regulatory process that small businesses have a voice and so and also the need to make sure that regulations are aligned with cost benefit analysis and, and to make sure that it's a that it is a transparent process as well and so this is great so th this has given great hope to small businesses so that as they um, work to grow their businesses they know that government is a partner and, and is working with them to to reduce those barriers as well. So it really sounds like fundamentally the president and the White House really care about small businesses and really see them as vital to the growth and economic development of the nation. Oh yes, yes. And we we see that because never before has the SBA has been given the type of visibility that has been given. When you look at administrative mills, she has been elevated to cabinet level status and you can you see her always meeting with the president. He the president has has been touring small businesses as well from the regulation front there's a focus on making sure that we address the capital needs we're pleased with the jobs act that was signed into law that will also um, help to fill in the gaps especially for startup companies that can't get um, loan from traditional banks but they they may be able to look at getting some alternative sources of capital as well so across the board there are many things that we're pleased with and I go around the country and I know that small businesses want to do what they do best which is grow their business create jobs, create wealth as well. And so we're pleased with the direction that things are going. For our economy to grow, we must export as well. And so I know that there's a focus for us to branch out and to make sure that we empower those small businesses because only 1% of small businesses export. Uh, and so what we want to do is we want to increase that number as well. So that's one of the things that I know that is a focus Which as well. is a great strategic opportunity. Right. Well, it's been wonderful speaking with you today, and I think there's so much that you have to offer. Your website, if people want to go and, and read about some of the policies and the research, what would that be? Yes, the website is www.sba.gov forward slash advocacy. Thanks so much for being here today. It was a great discussion. I'm glad to be here. And thanks for joining us for this special edition of Coffee With.